the founder of IBM, was a devout follower of Hitler. Thomas J. Watson had supplied his punch card computers and IBM technicians to the Nazis for use in the death camps. Tattoos on camp victims were IBM human identification numbers which fed into the computers. IBM had used similar punch card systems as early as 1928 in a Jamaican race mixing study. The first real computers were literally invented by a eugenicist for eugenics. The very first thing that the Nazis did when they took power in 32 was to hire IBM to reconstruct their census. So using essentially computers, they were punch card computers, they were mechanical computers that could tabulate and analyze information on these punch cards. And what the Nazis did was they, they created a very, very detailed census so that they could cross-reference their population for all sorts of variables. For example, whether someone was Jewish and wealthy and from the East or half Jewish and from Germany. And what they did with this extremely detailed portrait of their population was to initiate the Holocaust in a totally rationalized way that was deemed by the Nazis to be more palatable to Germans. So what they did was they, the very first Jews that they went after, after going after homosexuals and communists and, and gypsies, they went after wealthy Jews who had immigrated from Eastern Europe. Since this was a group that your average German anti-Semite felt least connected to, after they'd rounded them up, they went for wealthy German Jews and then people of half Jewish descent. And they did their roundup very, very rationally and methodically using these computers. The numbers on Holocaust survivors' arms, those tattooed numbers, are essentially the barcodes that were linked to the Hollerinth machines that IBM leased to the Nazis. And they had these in every death camp. They had them all over the place. They were constantly using this computer technology and the information they had gleaned in their census to manage the whole project of, of liquidating European Jewry. When Hitler came to power in 1933, his goal was to dismantle and destroy the Jewish community. This was an enterprise so fast that it required the resources of a computer. But in 1933, there was no computer. What there was, was the IBM punch card system, which controlled and stored information based upon the holes that were punched in various rows and columns. Naturally, there was no off-the-shelf software as there is today. Each application was custom designed and the engineer had to personally configure it. Millions of people of all religions and nationalities and characteristics went through the concentration camp system. That's an extraordinary traffic management program that required an IBM system in every railroad direction and an IBM system in every concentration camp. Now, this is a typical prisoner card. There are little boxes where all the information is to be punched in. We compare this information to the code sheet for concentration camps. And here you see Auschwitz is one, Buchenwald two, Dachau is three. Now, what kinds of prisoners were they? They could be a Jehovah's Witness for two, a homosexual for three, communist for six, or a Jew would be eight. Now, what was their status? One was released, two was transferred, four was executed, Five was suicide in six. Code six, Sonderbehandlung, special treatment, meant the gas chamber or sometimes a bullet. They would punch that number in, the material was tabulated, the machines were set, and of course the punch cards by the millions had to be printed and they were printed exclusively by IBM and the profits were recovered just after the war. I really do believe that that particular accusation has been fairly discredited as a serious accusation. That is, the fact that they have used equipment, you know, that is a fact, but how they got it, how much cooperation they got, and any kind of collusion trying to connect dots that are not connected, I think that's the part that is discredited. 
generally you sell computers and they're used in a variety of ways and you always hope they're used in the more positive ways possible. If you ever found out they're used in ways that are not positive, then you would hope that you stop supporting that. But do you always know? Can you always tell? Can you always find out? IBM would, of course, say that it had no control over its German subsidiary. But here on October 9th of 1941, a letter is being written directly to Thomas J. Watson with all sorts of detail about the activities of the uh, German subsidiary. None of these machines were uh, sold. They were all leased by IBM, and they had to be serviced on site once a month, even if that was at a concentration camp such as Dachau Buchenwald. This is a typical uh, contract with IBM and the Third Reich which was instituted in, nine, in 1942. It's not with the Dutch subsidiary, it's not with the German subsidiary, it is with the IBM Corporation in New York.